Hi guys, um, we're going to continue our discussion of respiration now and where I left you last was we had generated pyruvate from um, at the end of the glycolysis pathway and as I mentioned there and in the overview um, the whole point of the glycolytic pathway is to commit glucose to the breakdown you know process um, you know kind of activate that molecule so that it will take part in the subsequent reactions otherwise it's too stable and ultimately to generate pyruvate now yes we do make a little bit of ATP there and a little bit of reduced NAD um, but the main product was pyruvate and we're going to look at what happens next to that pyruvate um, yes do watch the overview video um, if you if you do that then at least you know you can appreciate that this reduced NAD is very very significant the whole story of the release of energy from glucose is tied into redu reduction of coenzymes um, so I guess a very quick summary would be that we have glucose we, we break that down to pyruvate that pyruvate then enters the Krebs cycle and if we're following the story of energy then the Krebs cycle transfers the energy from glucose and pyruvate or pyruvate it transfers the energy into reduced coenzymes the energy from the reduced coenzymes then goes into the electron transport chain and the electron transport chain then transfers the energy from the re reduced coenzymes and we're talking in kind of broad terms here it transfers the energy from the reduced coenzymes into a proton a proton gradient so it use that energy is used to pump protons creating a proton gradient and ultimately that proton gradient is used or, or the energy in the proton gradient is then used to synthesize make ATP from ADP okay so this is our flow of energy from glucose to ATP first we have to make pyruvate and that's where we are in this story and the whole point of Krebs cycle so what we could do is say well all right this this is glycolysis right and we've just done that glycolysis break down glucose to pyruvate and the next stage is going to be Krebs cycle which is and its whole point the whole you know the main function that I want you to remember the whole the main point of Krebs cycle is we transfer the energy that's still in pyruvate to, to make reduced coenzymes okay so we're going to talk about chemical changes occurring in the cycle yes but the whole point is what's being produced um, by the turning of that cycle okay what's coming what's what's being released from that cycle what's what's then going on to the to the further stages because the cycle is just going to keep going round and round as long as we, we, we keep um, providing pyruvate okay and then finally once we've got the reduced coenzymes the last bit is the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation okay so glycolysis Krebs cycle this is the story okay so we're going to be focusing on this now and let's do that okay so we've got pyruvate and I guess it is important that we now Um, you know just appreciate that what's happened you know the next stages that we're going to look at now are going to be happening in the mitochondria okay so yeah just a little bit of navigation for us there um, this is the mitochondria this is the cytoplasm this is the mitochondria the mitochondria has a, an outer membrane and an inner membrane um, and this is the matrix 
Okay, so outer membrane. inner membrane matrix okay and what's the significance here inner membrane that's where the electron transport chain will be happening matrix is where the link reaction and the Krebs cycle primarily will be happening so it's important that you know that because knowing the locations of these events is required knowledge Okay, so make sure you understand that. So glycolysis was happening here. So glucose to pyruvate happened out here in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm. Glucose to pyruvate happened in the cytoplasm. And now pyruvate gets transported across the two membranes into the matrix. So now it's here. And this is where the link reaction is going to happen. Okay. Now, um, let me just make a bit more space for myself. I know I'm going to change this diagram anyway. Okay. Now these kind of weird foldy things, um, you know, if you put two and two together, if some, if an important process is happening in a membrane, it's going to make sense that the more of that membrane we have, the more efficiently that process can occur. Um, if we need it to and so you know these folds of the membrane called crista are or christi um, yeah these things um, they're just there to kind of increase the surface area of that inner membrane where the electron transport chain and the oxidative phosphorylation is going to happen anyway i'm going to expand on this later but Krebs cycle is happening also in the matrix. Now, Krebs cycle takes in two carbon units, and pyruvate is three carbons. Krebs cycle takes in two carbon units, um, you know, produce, you know, and it kind of breaks those down to carbon dioxide. And, re and recycles, um, but but pyruvate is three carbon. So how do we go? How do, you know pyruvate is what ultimately feeds the Krebs cycle, what keeps it going, right? But how does how does that transition happen? And how we get from that three carbon to the two carbon input for Krebs cycle? That is called the link reaction. Okay, so that's just a bit of explanation of why the link reaction is important. We need to convert the three carbon pyruvate to a two carbon unit because Krebs cycle accepts two carbon units. Why enzymes? Remember, enzymes are very specific about their substrates, and um, having a carbon atom missing is it's a big deal. Okay, um, an enzyme will notice that. So, um, yeah. The enzyme that kind of accepts these carbon units will not accept a three carbon molecule. So that's your reason. Okay, so link reaction, pyruvate. First thing is there's two steps, but it can be summarized as one. And wherever possible, I'm going to summarize. If you want to look into the details of this, by all means, do so. But I'm going to focus on what you need to know for it to make sense. Okay, um, if if you want if you want me to elaborate on anything, just leave me a comment and I'll I'll get back to you. Okay, um, so pyruvate is uh, it undergoes the link reaction in two steps, um, carried out by two enzymes, and eventually what we get is an acetal unit. Okay, so anyway, let's let's just look at what happens first. So first. Um, the pyruvate is modified, it's dehydrogenated. Okay, now this is important. Dehydrogenation steps are important here because what that means is we're extracting hydrogen and that hydrogen is later going to be used in the electron transport chain. Remember our story. Okay, so any dehydrogenation step is going to be important. And if we're extracting hydrogens, 
they have to be transferred to something and what they're going to be transferred to is our coenzyme NAD. So it starts off as NAD, sometimes shown as NAD+, and it gets reduced because the pyruvate has been dehydrogenated, okay? So this is important. Um, should just write that down. Okay, so the pyruvate is... So if we're just talking about the link reaction here, important points about the link, link reaction is dehydrogenation of dehydrogenation of pyruvate, okay? And that gives us one NADH that will, yes, it will, it will provide um, electrons for the electron transport chain and protons for uh, pumping across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, so that's one step, and that's carried out by the enzyme very conveniently called pyruvate dehydrogenase. I'm just going to abbreviate that, PD, okay? Actually, that might not be a good idea for reasons that will become clear very quickly. So, I'm just going to write out the whole thing. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. You know, these names are really quite long and... It's not easy for people like me trying to make the most of small amounts of space. Um, let's just call that one and we'll make the note of the name here. So that's enzyme one and we'll name it here. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. Okay, so that's it. And a second step happens following that, carried out by a second enzyme, and that second enzyme does something else. It decarboxylates the pyruvate. Okay, it decarboxylates the pyruvate, and what that means is we lose a carbon atom in the form of carbon dioxide. So decarboxylation. So that's the other stage. So um, decarbo decarboxylation of, yeah, let's just call it pyruvate, but remember it's, it's, it's a stepwise reaction. So decarboxylation is carried out by pyruvate Pyruvate, yes, you guessed it, pyruvate decarboxylate. See, not that complicated really, okay? Pyruvate decarboxylate. Ace. What is decarboxylase? Okay? And because we've lost that carbon, we have now, yes, we have now converted our three carbon molecule into our two carbon molecule. And that molecule is called acetate, right? Now, this is where another coenzyme plays an important role because this acetate can't just be floating around. It, it needs a carrier to take it to its next destination. And that carrier is called, it's another coenzyme obviously, is called coenzyme A. So, the thing that's actually produced so the acetate gets passed on to the coenzyme. So should I just do it this way? So the acetate combines with coenzyme A. It combines with coenzyme A, forming something more commonly or more recognizable, which is acetyl coenzyme A, right? Now, the reason I kind of broke that step down is that it's important to, to understand that you know, we're, yes, we're forming acetyl-CoA, but it's, it's really only the acetyl bit, this two-carbon unit that's, that's derived from the pyruvate. This coenzyme is, is a kind of shuttle, it's a carrier, 
that will take the acetal unit to the Krebs cycle and deliver it and then leave it there and come back to collect more acetate. Okay, this, this CoA bit on the end is not taking part in the met metabolic reactions. It's not being modified itself um, permanently. Is that making sense? Okay, so the, the CoA is just a shuttle. Just like the NAD is a shuttle for hydrogen, the CoA is a shuttle for the acetal units, just taking them from the link reaction and passing it on to the Krebs cycle and so on. Okay, so if we are following the story of the energy, glucose, pyruvate, now acetal-CoA. And it's the acetal-CoA that can enter the Krebs cycle. Now it's important to know at this note, at this stage, though I, I don't want to risk kind of confusing you, but at this point, a number of um, so we've been just been talking about glucose as a source of of this uh, uh, energy um, for hydrogens, etc. However, it, it's not only glucose. So if if you I, I kind of hinted at this in in the last videos, if you have other molecules which are very similar in structure to glucose, they can also enter into the glycolytic pathway. You know, yes, they do have to undergo some modifications before they can enter the glycolytic pathway, but they will do so. Amino acids can also be kind of broken down, deaminated, leaving a carbon chain, and they can also, and once they're converted to pyruvate, they can enter the link reaction, you know, um, and so even amino, and ultimately then even proteins, and you must appreciate that even then proteins can be used to get energy, right? And when you're lacking in dietary glucose or you know, you've, you've kind of used up your supply of, of lipids and you've used up your supply of carbohydrates. Um, muscle tissue is broken down. You know, this is when people kind of look unhealthily, um, you know, kind of unhealthily thin, is when their muscle tissue is being broken down to provide amino acids, to pro you know, to provide the energy because there's nothing else left. Anyway, proteins can come in this way um, via the amino acids being converted to pyruvate. And the important thing is that lipids, you know, your, your store of lipids, the thing that, you know, makes you fat is a, is a really good source of energy. And the reason it's a good source of energy is they can be, those fatty acids in the lipids can be broken down to two carbon units, which are made into acetyl coenzyme A. And so lipids, and we should do it this way, lipids, Triglycerides from storage can be broken down to fatty acids. Fatty acids are broken down to acetyl-CoA, and acetyl-CoA then jumps in. So, so acetyl-CoA, we, we, we're discussing just in terms of how it's produced from glucose, but acetyl-CoA can also be provided by breakdown of lipids. Okay, And that's an important kind of thing to appreciate. And I'm not going to talk about this further, but even in the Krebs cycle, as the Krebs cycle turns, there's points at which different amino acids, after undergoing some modification, can enter as intermediates of the Krebs cycle. So they also provide, that. that's also another way of extracting energy from amino acids if you need to. Okay, but yeah, this is the link reaction and uh, it happens in the matrix. We're going to next talk about the Krebs cycle, which is going to be fueled by this acetyl-CoA that we've produced. And that's also going to be happening in the matrix. Okay, so forgive me if I don't draw another uh, mitochondria diagram. Okay, so we've just had the link reaction, and we produced acetyl-coenzyme A and from, from our pyruvate, and we had one decarboxylation step. Um, so we've lost one carbon from the pyruvate and we've, we've made this two carbon unit acetyl, uh, acetyl unit which has been added on to coenzyme A. Okay, so we're going to look at the Krebs cycle now. Okay, near enough. Okay, so we've got our acetyl unit coming in there. Acetyl-CoA, the coenzyme A will deliver that acetyl unit into 
the Krebs cycle and it, the coenzyme part, will go off to it back into uh, or back towards the link reaction and, and you know we can think of it as collecting a, another acetate unit uh, to bring to the Krebs cycle so it's that's kind of it's the end of that its story here um, yeah so so it's, it's delivered this two carbon unit into the cycle so let's just make a record of that it's delivered two carbons into the cycle and the way it delivers it is that it delivers those two carbons to an existing four carbon molecule called oxalo oxaloacetate okay and let's just make a note that that is four carbons so four Th that acetyl unit gets added onto this four carbon molecule, so we get a six carbon molecule called citrate, 6C. And um, yes, you do need to know the names of the molecules that I'm making a note of here, but in the first instance, just focus on the number of carbons. As long as that all makes sense, um, then you can worry about uh, remembering the names of these molecules. The two carbon compound acetyl unit um, uh, combines with the oxaloacetate to, com uh, to produce this six carbon molecule called citrate. Citrate then undergoes um, a modification that produces a five carbon compound okay and I'm going to ignore the names I would like to focus on the carbons and and the production of uh, reduced coenzymes so um, because we've gone from six carbons here to five carbons there we have lost co2 right there and so that's a decarboxylation step but what also happens here is that mole um, these compounds undergo uh, oxidations. Now because they're being oxidized, yes, you've guessed it, something else must be being reduced. And the thing that gets reduced are coenzymes. And this is important because it's these reduced coenzymes that are going to be providing the electrons and protons that will be really significant in the stage of oxidative phosphorylation later. So, I mean, I always look at Krebs cycle as, as just a, um, a factory for reduced NAD, okay, or, and FAD, so reduced coenzymes. Um, and I think that can sometimes help with, with the understanding of the process to kind of maybe reduce certain complicated steps down to their very most basic essential components. What goes in, what comes out, what, what's important about what comes in, what, in, what is important about what goes out. So here, there we have it. In this stage, we go from six carbons to five carbons. We lose a carbon dioxide um, in the process. And importantly, we generate NAD there. Okay, now this five carbon compound undergoes further change to make a four carbon compound and again we have a decarboxylation event <clears throat> and we also get more NAD reduced here as well so I'm just going to highlight these things because these are the this is the key product of this process okay and I would suggest that you're always focusing on what the whole point of, of these you know more complicated procedures are okay so again we get a reduced NAD now we, we've regenerated a four carbon compound here and, and this is important for the continuation of the cycle and what is also significant is we added two carbons into this cycle and we've already lost two carbons okay so we've kind of 
uh, balanced the situation again we've lost the two carbons that we brought in and you know this is this is actually a significant event because you know when we talk about respiration being glucose plus oxygen gives you carbon dioxide and water well you know this is we've we've reached a stage where the glucose that we started with has all the carbons in the glucose that we started with has have reached the stage where they've been completely you know the glucose has been completely dismantled and used to produce the much more simple molecule carbon dioxide so that journey of the carbons of, from glucose is pretty much complete at this stage okay or it will be when the second acetyl units comes in remember each glucose gave us two pyruvates two pyruvate molecules would then be converted into two acetyl units so each for each one glucose that went into glycolysis this cycle would turn once and twice thanks to two acetyl units um, coming in from the one glucose okay so when when that cycle turns around twice that will be the end of the story for the carbons of glucose right we'll have broken it down but then we would ask ourselves well okay we broke down the glucose into carbon dioxide where did the energy go and this is important because as well as the bits and pieces of a few ATPs here and there that we've made um, the energy is now in the reduced NAD this is how we must be thinking about it okay that the energy from that breakdown has been used to make this and therefore the energy you know technically is 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 here okay and that energy is going to be used at a later stage to make ATP and that's when our discussion about oxidative phosphorylation will be important okay so this Krebs cycle is a very kind of important intermediate stage where it's really where the energy from from the carbons gets extracted and, and put into NADH reduced coenzymes even FAD as well okay so let's see what happens next Okay, so the 4-carbon compound undergoes further modification. It still remains as a 4-carbon compound. We don't add any carbons, we don't lose any carbons as carbon dioxide, but um, they are modifications that we don't need to know about. Remember, these are you know, much more complicated than just 4-carbons. They have other atoms attached, and, and the organization of those things changes, but that's not really important for us to know. What is important for us to know is what the end product of those modifications is and, and what gets produced as a result and in this conversion right here significantly we get ADP converted to ATP did it happen did it happen um, <clears throat> to ATP and and what we have to ask ourselves and what we have to ask ourselves is did this ATP get made thanks to oxidative phosphorylation no it didn't did it rely on any proton gradients no it didn't did it rely on uh, the electron transport chain no it didn't therefore this is a substrate level phosphorylation and you know we've mentioned them before and we do need to kind of be uh, be noticing when these things happen okay um, as well we we, we kind of need to take account of it um, at a later stage you know if you would like to kind of be totaling up the numbers of ATP being produced at each stage okay right next what happens next we've made one NAD another NAD <clears throat> In the next stage, the 4-carbon compound undergoes another modification, okay, and at this stage, and at this stage, we do get a reduction, so we do get um, a dehydrogenation, but 
this time we reduce FAD and not NAD. Okay, so just a slight difference from previous or other times. But again, it's still this is still important. It's still a, a, a source of electrons and protons for later stages for the electron transport chain, so it's significant for us. And finally, in the last step, um, the four the four the four carbon compound gets modified in the last step to return it into the form of oxaloacetate. <clears throat> okay, now this also generates one reduced NAD. So, NAD reduced to NADH. So, significant events have happened here and I guess maybe we could summarize it in by saying that you know the acetyl units come in and you know the um, uh, two carbon acetyl added to four carbon oxalo oxaloacetate okay six carbon citrate is then decarboxylated right six carbon citrate decarboxylated please refer to that don't don't say carbon dioxide is removed please please describe it as the process of decarboxylation so citrate decarboxylated um, and also um, reduction of NAD so reduction of NAD we can we can generalize and say it's the reduction of coenzymes that's also fine but um, I think at this level it's important for us to be able to discriminate the events where NAD is reduced and, and, and the step at which FAD is reduced. Okay, three, um, five carbon compound is again decarboxylated, decarboxylated, again NAD is reduced, I should Okay, uh, five carbon decarboxylated, NAD reduced, and uh, now these these reduction steps are important because every time every time the NAD is reduced, we're we're extracting hydrogen from these molecules in you know whatever chemical change is happening here. We don't need to know the nature of it, but whatever's happening here, the the, pro, the you know the key part of it is hydrogen is being extracted here. And it's, and it's being passed on to the coenzyme NAD. And it's essentially um, the source of the electrons that will move through the electron transport chain. Okay? Um, and, you know, we get at, at, the, at the stage four here, we get um, a substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, ATP produced. Okay, um, we also get FAD reduced and if I've got space in subsequent steps we get NAD reduced again and I'll just continue on this side seven key points is that we ox we regenerate the oxaloacetate we Re regenerate generate oxaloacetate regenerated okay and it's important now um one other uh, important point is that the cycle will turn twice for each glucose so let me just put that on here cycles twice for 
each glucose. Remember, I've already explained that. I'll let you figure out why. Okay, so cycles twice for each glucose and therefore, um, you know, if we want to look at the net production of reduced coenzymes, um, one, two, three NADs, a reduced NAD, one reduced FAD. But that's for one acetal unit. We, for each glucose, we would get two acetal units. And so the net um, production of NAD in the Krebs cycle for each glucose would be six reduced NADs and two reduced FADs. Okay, and in terms of ATP production, we'd get two molecules of ATP produced per glucose in the Krebs cycle as well. Okay, um, yeah, so that is that. Um, right, so main point, main point, it always helps to focus on the main points. Acetal units go into Krebs cycle. Those acetal units effectively get broken down with to carbon dioxide, okay, um, in the stepwise modifications of these uh, carbon-based molecules. Um, we, we lose effectively the carbons that come in with the acetal units, but what happens importantly is it provides the, uh, the carbons needed to keep this cycle going and in keeping that cycle going we are continually generating reduced coenzyme okay and I think we'll leave it there next we'll talk about what happens um, we'll talk about what happens to these reduced coenzymes okay all right I think that is it